Welcome friends to this uh, fourth lecture of week 9 of soil science and technology and uh, in this lecture we will be trying to wrap up this uh, conservation tillage topic and then we will be starting uh, the wind erosion and as well as tillage related erosion. And uh, in the last lecture we talked about different aspects of conservation tillage and uh, what are the diff six different uh, processes, six different types of conservation tillage we talked about. Uh, no till, we talked about zero till, we talked about the vertical tillage, we talked about reach tillage practices and then uh, so on and so forth. And then uh, we talked uh, about uh, you know zero tillage and how we are maintaining the crop residues using the zero tillage and how uh, this air pollution uh, you know also we have discussed about this vertical or turbo tillage system and what are their advantages, what are their drawbacks. And um, then we talked about this uh, happy cedar and how the happy cedar is uh, helping us to control the air pollution uh, which is basically created due to the burning of uh, crop residues. So in this lecture we will be talking about, uh, we will be talking about different, uh, you know, different aspects of conservation tillage and we will be talking about different uh, soil properties which are you know being affected because of some conservation tillage. So let us start with the erosion control by conservation tillage. So remember that in case of conservation tillage it promotes a rapid infiltration which reduces the surface runoff losses because uh, since the since one of the major criteria or major assumption or major criteria for conservation tillage is to maintain at least 30 percent of the cover. Uh, crop cover over the you know over the soil surface and minimum disturbances of the soil. So, that helps in you know uh, aggregation in the soil uh, you know less uh, less decay of organic matter, less uh, decomposition of organic matter and as a result of more binding of soil particles and when there is a more binding of the soil particles more aggregate formation that will facilitate the water infiltration uh, and when there will be more water infiltration obviously there will be less chance of water runoff. Not only that due to the binding action of these roots of the plant as well as the binding action of organic matter these soil particles are having less chance to carry it uh, away from you know erode away from one place to another place uh, along with the flowing water or runoff. So, that is why uh, obviously this when they, we are maintaining this conservation tillage we are actually uh, you know encouraging the you know encouraging the more aggregate formation or beneficial aggregate formation in the soil and it promotes the rapid infiltration which reduces the surface runoff losses and also significantly reduces the loss of nutrient dissolved in runoff water or attached to sediments and that also maintains the inherent fertility of the soil. So, although the differences are not as pronounced as with soil erosion, these differences are reflected in the much lower C factor. If you remember that C factor which you consider in the, uh, in the calculation of universal soil as equation. So, uh, these differences are reflected in much lower C factor values assigned to conservation tillage systems. So, uh, erosion control, let us see the trends of erosion control by conservation tillage. You can see here in the conserve, con you know, uh, you know, <coughs> there is a corn followed following the soybeans and here you can see corn following the corn and uh, obviously in the conservational tillage soil loss is high in both the system and followed by disc chisel with minimum tillage and the lowest soil loss you can get in case of, of uh, this no tillage system. And obviously, in both the system the runoff is highest in case of uh, uh, obviously conventional tillage followed by uh, followed by no till system and then this chisel system and the similar trend you have found in case of corn following corn system also. So, basically that shows that the importance of uh, conservation tillage for controlling the soil loss and also reduction of the uh, runoff. 
So again, uh, you know, it is always recommended to use the no till or disc till chiller, uh, disc chisel with the minimum tillage to maintain the uh, soil health. So, what are the effects on soil properties? Is very important aspects. So, uh, you know, this uh, conservation tillage has different effects on soil properties. It has got uh, physical, you know, it has got Im impact on physical properties of the soil. It has got impact on chemical properties of the soil, and it has got impact on biological properties of the soil. So, as far as the physical properties of the soils are concerned, it increases the you know bulk density. It increases the infiltration. It increases the water holding capacity. It increases organic matter into the soil. It uh, you know and also the residue cover soil are generally cooler because sometimes it is detrimental for. However, sometimes it is detrimental for the seed germination. This cooler uh, temperature. And as far as the chemical properties are concerned, obviously it increases the nutrient mineralization. It increases the catenation capacity, but uh, also may increase the denitrification sometime because of the you know less inversion or less air movement sometime and uh, it also decreases the decomposition rate uh, so maintaining the organic matter in the soil sequestering more soil in the uh, more, more carbon in the soil uh, or enhancing the carbon sequestration and also as mixing of soil does not take place so there is a chance of developing acidifying agent due to decomposition so in that case we need lime application as you know that we are applying we uh, we generally need to apply lime in case of acidic condition and third one is the biological properties obviously the abundance activity and dive, you know and the diversity of soil organism tend to be greatest in term in case of conventional tillage as compared to uh, the uh, you know obviously these are high in case of conservation tillage as compared to from uh, conventional tillage so effect on soil properties obviously uh, you can see here different effects on soil properties let us let us let us see here uh, three different types of uh, tillage system one is plow tillage another is chisel plow or minimum till and then no till so you can see organic carbon obviously it is lowest in case of plow tillage followed by chisel plow no till and in the no till system or ch chisel plow minimum till and no till system bulk density bulk density is always highest in case of plow tillage followed by chisel plow and followed by no till system so when there is a high bulk density obviously there will be compactness and as a result of that water movement will be restricted uh, or water infiltration will be restricted when the water infiltration is restricted there is obviously increased chance of uh, surface runoff infiltration uh, you know this hydraulic conductivity is also uh, increased in case of uh, uh, no till system followed by the minimum till system and uh, in case of plow tillage the infiltration rate is lowest available water holding capacity is highest in case of no till followed by minimum till and then uh, plow tillage uh, penetration resistance will be always highest in case of plow tillage just like you know it will be much more compact and then chisel plow followed by chisel plow uh, minimum till and then lowest will be in case of no till system and uh, macro aggregates will be highest in case of no till system uh, and obviously the uh, you know corn yield will be highest in case of minimum till uh, with the chisel plus so you can see all the beneficial effects of soil properties can be obtained by using this conventional tillage uh, by using the conservation tillage practice instead of conventional tillage practice because conventional tillage practice reduce the organic carbon it increases the bulk density increases the uh, penetration resistance it increases the um, uh, you know it, it it decreases the available water holding capacity so obviously from this uh, you know uh, you know uh, uh, if if you see uh, there is always uh, increase in beneficial soil properties as compared to uh, all there is always increase in beneficial soil properties in con uh, in conservation tillage practices as compared to conventional tillage so let us move ahead and see 
uh, okay so this shows the uh, picture of two, the same soil uh, you know we are having you know both this picture are showing the same you know is some you know soil which are affecting the which are affected by conservation tillage practices. So, in the left picture shows the soil condition in a no tillage system you can see it is darker in color because of high amount of organic matter. And the similarly you can see the left in the right picture it shows the same soil under no till system and via and versus conservation conventional or, uh, tillage system. So, you can see this soil is under no till system and this soil is under conventional system. Now, obviously, from the from the visual uh, you know effect it can be identified that this uh, no till system soil are having high amount of organic matter than that of the conventional tillage practices. So, obviously, the beneficial effects of soil will be much more uh, you know in this uh, no till system uh, soil however, in this conventional tillage system uh, you know uh, reduces the organic matter here. So, that basically shows the uh, effect of this uh, alternate conservation tillage practices in um, different beneficial soil properties. And also you can see some other effects you can see due to the convention uh, conservation tillage practices there is a dense growth of nitrogen fixing wedge within a zero tillage uh, rotation. So, obviously, this dense growth of nitrogen fixing plant helps in more anchoring the soil much more uh, helping prevention of the uh, uh, helping preventing the uh, movement of soil particles through runoff. And also you can see development of porous soil architecture beneath a grass crop in rotation. So, this soil architecture helps in more water movement reducing the chances of runoff. So, these are other beneficial effects as I have already mentioned. So, let us discuss in the final slide. So, let us discuss what is the advantages and disadvantages of con con uh, conservation tillages. So, conservation tillage obviously the advantages are reduced erosion obviously this is one of the major thing and then it saves our it saves the fuel of implement different implements and then cut cost of maintenance of the field and also tillage operation. It holds more soil uh, water it reduces the soil compaction it allows several crops per season and also it does not reduce uh, crop yields and it reduces carbon dioxide released from the soil thereby reducing the uh, greenhouse effect. What are the disadvantages? Obviously, this has, you know, conservation tillage are also having some disadvantages. It can use increase the herbicide use for some crop because we are maintaining the the ground cover, and obviously there will be chances of uh, weed infestation. And also, leaf stalks that can harbor crop pest and fungal diseases and increases pesticide use for those uh, for those uh, diseases, and also uh, requires investment in expensive equipments just like I told you about the happy cedar. However, uh, irrespective of these things you know there is a great pos prospect of conservation tillage for maintaining the uh, for maintaining the soil quality and reducing the soil erosion and specifically a country like India requires this type of practice for maintaining their uh, inherent soil fertility and also to prevent the continuous soil degradation. So, guys I hope that now several things are clear to you and uh, about the conservation uh, tillage practices and how it is beneficial and uh, so, uh, we are finishing this uh, conservation tillage lecture topic and uh, in the, the next topic we will be discussing is wind erosion and tillage erosion and the concepts which we will be covering are reasons of different wind erosion and then mechanisms of wind erosion, then prediction of wind erosion, then what is tillage erosion and finally, prediction of tillage erosion. So, uh, let us start with the reasons of uh, wind erosion. Obviously, uh, you can see this is a uh, worldwide map of vulnerability to wind erosion and you can see different color codings for low, moderate, high and very high. Obviously, you can see here India in Indian condition uh, there is a always high and very high uh, chances of wind erosion. You can see uh, most of the areas are vulnerable uh, specifically these areas are vulnerable to moderate to high to very high uh, wind erosion except 
these western uh, indian parts so um, so wind erosion is an important uh, aspect of uh, wind erosion you know uh, in a, in a important aspect of soil erosion so obviously what are the different reasons for wind erosion overgrazing of the fragile land uh, of arid and semi arid areas and also dry regions with strong wind and no with and no obstacles so region vulnerable to both wind erosion includes the sahel area in africa and the pacific coast of south america and the lowest plateau in china so uh, all these areas are very very uh, uh, susceptible to wind erosion so let us move ahead and see uh, mechanics of wind erosion so wind erosion involves three basically three basic processes just like in case of water erosion it is basically combination of detachment uh, and then movement and deposition similarly uh, detachment transportation deposition so similarly uh, wind erosion is also involved also involves three basic processes these are basically detachment transportation and deposition so uh, the moving air uh you know itself results in some detachment of tiny soil grains from the granules or clods of which they are a part and however when the moving air is laden with some you know soil particles it is it is abrasive power is greatly increased so there are three processes in transportation uh one is called saltation another is soil creep another is suspension we'll discuss all of these so transportation is mediated through these three processes one is again saltation then soil creep and suspension so let us discuss what are these so saltation is the first and most important mode of particle transportation remember this movement of soil by a series of series of short bounces along the uh, ground force is called saltation and uh, the particles remain fairly close to the ground as they bounce and seldom rise more than 30 cm or so and depending on the condition this process may account for 50 to 90% of the total movement of the soil so this saltation process is the major process which uh, accounts for the lion share of uh, the wind trans wind based transportation process the second important transportation process is soil creep soil creep is basically rolling and sliding along the surface of the larger particles and the bouncing particles carried by uh, saltation strike larger particles and aggregates and accelerates their movement along the surface and finally soil creep accounts for the movement of particles up to about 1 mm in diameter and uh, which may about you know to 5 to 25% of the total movement so this is how soil creep and finally suspension suspension is when the dust particles of fine sand size and smaller are moved parallel to the ground surface and upwards that is called suspension obviously again remember that these dust particles and fine sand size and smaller particles are moved parallel to the ground surface and upward that is called suspension and the turbulent action of the wind results in other particles being carried kilometers upward into uh, into the atmosphere and many hundreds of kilometers horizontally so that is that is why the winds basically carry the soil particles from one place to another place which are far apart from each other and the process stops when wind subsides or precipitation wash down them and it may accounts for more than 40% of the total and is generally no more than about 15% so this is the saltation process i mean this is a transportation process which shows different types of movement so you can see this is much more clear so this is a saltation process so so saltation process slow bounces of this so just like as the definition of the saltation we saw if we go if if we go back this is a movement of soil by series of short bounces so similarly you can see uh the saltation process shows the movement of uh, soil particles in a uh, short bounces as you can see short bounces whereas the soil creep is basically rolling of the soil particles and the suspension is uh, you know 
it is a movement through the air moving air so again here it is a, it, it is a saltation and it is a uh, soil creep and saltation side particles and aggregates in case of soil creeps it is 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 millimeter and it allows basically suspension uh, size dust are generally less than 0 0.1 millimeter this is very important again saltation size particles and aggregates generally ranges between 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 millimeter whereas uh, in case of suspension size of the dust should be less than 0 0.1 millimeter and in the suspension it moves along with the uh, you know wind and uh, these allows the you know these arrows basically indicates the relative wind speeds so you can now differentiate between these three processes of transportation wind based transportation so again this is a light area uh, shows uh, you know where the topsoil has been eroded and deposition of the topsoil along the fences so this is an example of uh, you know wind based uh, erosion where wind is carried away from with the blowing uh, i'm sorry the soil is carried away with the blowing wind and deposited in a uh, area which is far apart and uh, let me show you some examples of wind uh, uh, based erosion you can see these are the different pictures of dust bowl in which occurred in us in 1920s to 30s so these an extensive movement of dust uh, across the great plains and you know up to the new york and all these uh, you know washing and and uh, and other places when and basically disrupts the daily life you you know daily life of this united states is particularly during 1920 to 30 and this dust bowl basically resulted from uh, severe wind erosion so uh, what are the different factors which affects the wind erosion obviously wind velocity and turbulence is one of the important factor then surface roughness is another important factor then soil properties and vegetation the threshold velocity remember that the wind speed requires to initiate the soil movement is usually 25 km per hour or 7 meter per second at higher wind speed obviously soil movement is proportional to the cube of the wind velocity in case of surface roughness obviously wind erosion is less severe when the soil is rough so this roughness can be obtained by proper tillage methods uh, of the erosion uh, which basically can uh, you know reduce the and uh, which can be reduced by stubble mulching soil properties uh, in, in addition to moisture content weed erosion also influenced by mechanical stability of the soil clots and aggregates and the stability of the soil crust bulk density and size of the erodible fractions you know that and vegetation obviously vegetative or stubble mulch will reduce the wind erosion hazard especially if uh, rows run perpendicular to the prevailing wind direction so how we can predict the soil wind erosion the wind erosion predict equation or weq has been used in the since late 1960 and the formula of this wind erosion uh, of this equation is e equal to where e is basically function of uh, i c k l and v where uh, this e is basically the amount of soil loss by wind erosion it is a function of these five factors i is basically soil erodibility factor c is basically climate factor and k is basically soil ridge roughness factor l is basically width of the uh, fill factor and v is basically vegetative cover factor so uh, let us discuss these factors so predicting wind direction uh, you know we did uh, predicting wind erosion obviously an increase in mean temperature on the cloud this this uh, this graph basically shows the increase you know a trend where there is a mean where there is a there was a mean increase in temperature in the colorado plateau of united states and this mean temperature increase was 33 degree centigrade which basically resulted in greater soil drying that decreases the vegetative cover from 45 percent to 20 percent so as a result of increase in uh, you know increase in the mean temperature there is a greater drying and as a result of that the vegetative cover reduced from 45 percent to 20 percent of the ground surface and as a result of that the you know in you know this climate index reduction in vegetative cover more than double the amount of erosion caused by high winds that following year so you can see 
previous year mean annual temperature so it was uh, 10 degree centigrade and the next year it was 13 degree centigrade so you can see we you know these basically represent 15 kilometer per hour wind speed 20 kilometer power uh, uh, 20 kilometer per hour uh, wind speed and this basically represent 25 kilometer per hour wind speed. So, in the following year all these amounts of uh, aeolian sediment flux or the amount of uh, material carried away through wind erosion almost double because the vegetative cover was reduced from 45 to 20 percent. So, that shows the importance of vegetative cover for maintaining the or to prevent the wind based erosion. Okay. So, so, predicting the wind erosion, so let us consider all the factors. The soil erodibility factor I relates to the properties of the soil and to the degree of slope of the site in question and in the, the soil ridge and you know, soil ridge roughness factor K uh, takes into consideration the cloudiness of the soil surface and the vegetative cover V and the ridges on the soil surface and the climatic factor C involves wind velocity, soil temperature and precipitation which helps controlling the soil moisture and the width of the field factor that is L is the width of a field in the downward direction. Naturally, the wind changes as the direction of the wind changes. So, the prevailing wind direction is generally used and the vegetative cover factor V basically relates not only to the degree of soil surface covered with residues, but to the nature of the cover whether it is living or dead or still standing or flat on the ground. So, not only it not only covered the degree of soil surface covered, but it also covered it also it also considered the nature of that cover whether they are dead, whether they are alive, whether they are actively growing, whether they are I mean uh, flat or you know flat on the ground, what is the standing condition. So, all these are considered and you can see that total amount of wind erosion is basically interrelated for you know basically you know basically can be considered as the interplay of all these important uh, factors. Okay. So, so, a revised more complex and more accurate computer based prediction model has been devised and it is known as the revised wind erosion equation or RWEQ and this RWEQ make adjustment in the residue in soil erodibility and soil roughness parameter based on the input information about the management uh, operations and weather conditions. For example, if it assumes that residue decomposes over time, tillage operation flattens standing residues and rainfall reduces the soil roughness by slacking the soil clods. So, you can see guys uh, you know uh, while we are considering this wind based uh, uh, you know erosion and uh, different types of wind based uh, uh, factors these are also very much important and uh, scientists and engineers around the world are also cooperating in the continual development of a much more complex process based model known as the wind erosion prediction system or WEPS and this computer program simulates all the basic processes of wind interaction with the soil. So, uh, you know guys let us uh, wrap up here and uh, I hope that you have learned some new aspects of wind erosion in this lecture and in the next lecture or uh, in the fifth lecture of this uh, week 9, we will be trying to cover the aspects of different uh, controlling measures of wind erosion and then we will be talking about different uh, organic pollutants which are uh, present in the soil and how they are polluting the environment. And uh, thank you and let us meet in our next or fifth lecture of week 9 of soil science and technology. Thank you.